This time we are going to have an interview in English. I'm very pleased to have here Mr. David Bedin and we are going to show you exactly in the location in Jerusalem where all the things have been researched, have been presented to the media in English and have been shown to you for many years. You just have to go read, see and you will understand what's going on. So in a moment we'll have uh, Mr. David talking to us. So, nice to meet you sir. Nice to meet and you. And thank you very much for your time. Welcome to my office. A few words before we start. Uh, could you please explain to us what refugee means? A refugee is someone who does not have a home, who has been dislocated, who doesn't know where to go next. A social worker, and that's my field, walks in and sees it's going to be of help. And what I decided when I was 25 years old that I would be a social worker working in the refugee camps. And uh, to my great dismay, the refugee camp set up for the Palestinian Arabs instead of helping them get on with their lives, has them continue in, in refugeehood for per, per, what we say perpetuity, forever. It's a little bit awkward, wouldn't you say? Awkward is a kind word. It's, a, it's called a crime. To keep people in a refugee camp under false pretenses is the worst thing you can do. A waking up in the morning uh, to refugee conditions and saying to your family, oh, you, you need to go to a medical appointment? Oh, it's going to be available when, when we get Ashkelon back. We're not getting Ashkelon back. Oh, we're so sorry. So what the refugee, what the UNRWA refugee camps did was to take images, books, maps, and guides on how to take back Ashkelon by force. And what, what they did was to set up summer camps along the Gaza, Gaza perimeter and um, pretend they were going to be in, in, in attacks, in, 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 in very violent attacks. And that's what happened on October 7th. People from the refugee camps uh, rushed the border, rushed the uh, the fence, and what they had been learning in terms of guerrilla tactics and murdering murdering Jews and kidnapping Jews and taking people hostage, that's what they did. So uh, ends up or summarize up with the beginning with the education, right? That's uh, what they told to the children. It's worse than telling. Was well, to create a system where the children were being indoctrinated, hypnotized, brainwashed into the idea of the right of return by force of arms and justifying any violence that would take place. <laughs> You are the founder of Research Center. Right. I'm the, I'm the founder of the Israel Resource News Agency, which works with the Center for Near East Policy Research, which is an agency that started back in 1952 to try to present Israel's correct vision in the media. And as a founder, can you please uh, advise for how long are you following this situation? Since, since 1987, full time. Going back to education. Yes. So we have here a book from 20. 2023. Right? So we can see. Mm -hmm. And what is this book called? This is for fifth, fifth grade children. And what it, what it, the, the focus of the book is where you're holding your fingers right now um, of a picture of Dalal al-Mugrabi who murdered 36 Jews and she's presented as a hero in the book. Now what's important, people say, well that's what the Nazis did. The Nazis never did that. I've had four scholars of Nazi Germany sitting in this office who looked at the school books. We have more than a thousand school books which we got by asking permission from Yasser Arafat, the uh, founder of the, of the, of the uh, PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, and they said there was never books like this in Nazi Germany. This is worse. Because the Nazis were worried that there would be trials and rec recriminations. But this is much worse than that. And we see here is the logo. Of, of, the, of the state of Palestine. Palestine. And it says who, this is, who gives money for this? 
who doesn't? Who doesn't give money? There's a hundred. There's already sixty-seven nations and thirty-three non uh, nonprofit organizations. The leading nations are Germany, uh, Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, and uh, uh, Belgium, and the UK. Does anyone check what's there was, written in the book? They were supposed to check. That was part of the uh, arrangement in the Oslo process, but they never checked. Little problem there. The crime of of, of presenting school books which, which teach criminal behavior. And we knew what it was before. When one of the big shocks in Israel after 1967 was what the education was all about, education for murder. And this has continued that. As far as I, uh, I know, a member of European Parliament, Mr. Christian Terhesh, yes. you. Yes. And I was very pleased to see an interview with him in Romania showing yeah. this book. Right. And showing exactly this page. Right. I'm very pleased that he came and, and uh, talked to you. I'm very upset that nothing happened. Well, nothing happened because no one made an issue out of it in the European Union. People made the, the what's called the European Union or the European Commission. People made an issue of this in the European Parliament, but not where it counts. And some people in Israel who wanted to just reassure, oh, everything's going to be okay because the European Union, Parliament says it's going to be okay. That's not the way the, the real world works. You have to get to the right person to, get, to make the right decision. And the wrong decision was made. And the murders that have taken place over the last three months are direct, the people directly responsible, the people who are paying for this education. In 2009, we our agency, our research agency, um, revealed the fact that the majority of teachers are either from Islamic Jihad or from um, Hamas, and that, that, that didn't change. And that, that we've asked every country to please uh, stand up and say they should stop, and no country has. <laughs> أنا نور لمسي مديرة نادي أشبال العاصفة إحنا كل سنة اللجنة الوطنية بتعمل نوادي صيفية في مخيم عسكر قسمنا الأطفال لأربع مجموعات حتى بأسماء شهدائنا في مخيم عسكر أساسهم يضلوا حاضرين في ذهنهم وفي أفكارهم وتعلم منهم البطولة ويضلهم مستمرين في درب المقاومة وفي عندهم يعني كل طفل مستعد يكون مشروع شهيد مقابل إنه يحافظ على المبادئ اللي إحنا مترسخة عنا حقنا في العودة وإن شاء الله انتفاضة أقوى جاية وهذول أطفالنا هم اللي راح يقودوها. And I will have uh, another uh, question which I know the answer, but I I would like people watching our material to answer themselves or to realize the answer to this question. Did ever Palestinians have sovereignty over the land? The Palestinian Arab people never had sovereignty here, never had, never had sovereignty over Palestine, over Jerusalem, over Israel, it never happened. Their request is very interesting, it's not just for sovereignty, but for control of where the Jews are. One of the things they've done has been to change in their school books their Jewish names to Arab names. And what's, what's very important is the United Nations, which is supposed to oversee this system, does not do something very basic, which is to introduce United Nations school books. United Nations school books are okay, but this is, what, this is what's been imposed upon them. In the latest days, we found a shocking news with regard to the UNRWA main office. Well, the UNRWA main office, which is, you can't make these things up, which is 200 meters from the head of the, of the of Israel police, that's where all this has been directed from. The curriculum is directed from there. And the main office of UNRWA, which is run by a Swedish citizen, a citizen named Philip Lazzarini. Uh, incidentally, I'm raising money right now to go to the, court, to the um, courts to, to arrest him and charge him with premeditated murder. And I'm looking for people to contribute to our uh, fund, to our office. At our, our website is israelbehindthenews.com. You push a red button, you see how you can give us money. We want to hire a whole staff of investigators. We have the investigators ready to go and uh, to press charges against them, the, the first man in history, first man in history to produce a school system that calls for the murder of Jews. Never, ever did this happen, not under the Nazis. And by the way, we show this to Guterres, the head of the United Nations, met, met with him four times, found him to be very decent. He told the owner to get rid of this book. Well, they did for four years. Then they brought it back this year. I have also here a picture. Yes. Which I understand is very dear for you. Yes. Could you please explain? Sure. 
This is my daughter's best friend, okay, Daphna, and she was murdered by this Arab here. He he he, he ran he ran he's her. Smiling in the, here in the middle. Right? Well, the reason he's smiling, this is in court, uh, when he was brought in to be judged, and convicted of murder, and he's smiling because at that moment he got the money. The Palestinian Authority has passed an, has passed a law. If you murder a Jew, you get a salary for life. This has never been before. Not one nation in the world has called for the, for the repeal of that law. Not one. So my daughter, when she got married, she closed her eyes and saw this, this young lady, this pretty young lady who, who, who never got married. And he, she, she was spoken with her as, as, as she closed her eyes and spoke with her. And I carry that as a responsibility. I don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm 73 years old. I've been doing this for 37 years. But I have to do this in order to witness what's really going on. PLO tries to present itself as a peace entity, but they, had, they, done, they took over UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, in, in, in 1988. And ever since, it's been an entity of, of murder, of promoting murder. I don't know what terrorism is. I know what, what murder is. This, this man who murdered her may be getting out of jail soon because of the the hostages situation where they're demanding they're requesting the they're, they're, they're requesting the, the freedom of these killers and only international since no government is willing to sacrifice the good business it has with the PLO or with Hamas we depend on people to say this is not acceptable and when more people say it's not acceptable the better when I was uh, 17 I met Elie Wiesel he came to my high school wow. during, the, um, during the six day war and he had just written the book, The Jews of Silence. Of Silence. He said, there are Jews who are silence, silenced and there are Jews who are silent. There's no reason to be silent when you see this interview. Please open your mouth and say, this is not acceptable. Say it to the government of Israel, say it to the United Nations, and say it to those who are seeking justice. This young lady, throat, throat cut, wasn't good enough, and he ran her over. This is the voice of Satan, Satan, who accepts the salary for life. Now, how do we know about the salary for life? We have three Palestinian journalists working for us. We sent one of them into the Ministry of Justice, who, as a Palestinian, he asked to see the law. And I have the law here in the office. And we presented it for anyone who wants to see it. And that law needs to be repealed. Thank you very much for your time. And may God bless you. Thank and, you. And uh, may your work be a success. And let's see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I hope it's not an on, uh, Ben Gurion once said this to a fellow cabinet member. I hope it's not an oncoming train. Thank you. Um, we always have to have hope. That's what Hatikva is, the na national anthem of Israel. And that's the story. Thank you. Here with us, it's also the president of Moresha Derech, uh, the association of uh, incoming tourist guides of Israel. So, Mr. Yoni Shapira. He's going to say some words for us, and let's hear him. Thank you, Alina. And uh, as president of, of the Israeli Federation of Tour Guides for Incoming Tourism, we at the WFTGA is an organization that represents tour guides. And tour guides are inclusive, are for peace, are for bringing people together, are for transforming information, narratives, and cultures between people that may be of different points of view, of different background, and maybe enemies. However, we cannot be silent when terror takes place. And I made a statement there that I would like the WFTGA to present to the UN, which says terrorism and tourism do not go together. We are all good people, but when good people are silent and when good organizations are silent, bad things happen. And we cannot allow bad things to happen anymore Israel was butchered, in a sense, in the 7th of October, worse than any other day since the Holocaust. We cannot afford that again. So as tour guides, we are all for sharing. We are all for giving a story, but the real story has to come out, and that terrorism and tourism do not go together, and we have to stand against it.